or false, HbA1c cannot be measured or reported if uh, in a patient sample there is no hemoglobin A. True, if hemoglobin A is not present in a patient sample, then hemoglobin A1c cannot exist, be measured or truthfully reported using any hemoglobin A1c testing method. If there is no hemoglobin A and therefore no hemoglobin A1c in a sample, it does not make sense to test for hemoglobin A1c using immunoassay, enzymatic, boronate affinity, or any other methods. Any reported hemoglobin A1c value will be clinically wrong. Why Biorad HPLC? Biorad HPLC, in contrast, reveals hemoglobin variants and alerts you when there is no hemoglobin A1c result to ensure that you release clinically accurate results. Hi, I am Marco Flamini, a hemoglobin testing expert at Bioral Laboratories. Today, we will present answers to the following questions. Why can't A1C be measured in common homozygous and double heterozygous hemoglobinopathies? What do immunoassay, enzymatic, and boronate affinity methods measure and report as HbA1c? Which HbA1c testing method can you trust? Which analytes should be used to measure glycemic control in patients with hemoglobinopathies that do not express hemoglobin A? Why can't hemoglobin A1c be measured in common homozygous and double heterozygous hemoglobinopathies? Let's see how genetics can help to explain. These are the typical genes expressing typical globin chains, alpha in orange and beta in dark blue. In cases of homozygous SS or double heterozygous E beta plus, these individuals have inherited unusual beta genes, resulting in alterations of their beta globin chain production. In such cases, no beta normal or very few beta normal chains are expressed. One expresses only beta S chains, the other beta E and very few beta normal. And so one makes primarily hemoglobin S, the other makes mainly hemoglobin E and minimal hemoglobin A. This is how genetics explains why there is no A1C in SS and undetectable A1C in E beta plus. It is clear from the chromatograms that in homozygous SS there is no hemoglobin A and in double heterozygous E beta thalassemia there is minimal hemoglobin A. How do homozygous and double heterozygous hemoglobinopathies affect the glycation process? Here are some examples of homozygous and double heterozygous phenotypes with little or no hemoglobin A. If there are no beta chains, glucose cannot bind and make hemoglobin A1c. Instead, glucose binds to the beta variant to make the glycated fraction of the variant, hemoglobin S1c in this case. The glycation rate of variants, such as hemoglobin S, is different from the glycation rate of hemoglobin A, as discussed for hemoglobin S in this scientific paper. We must remember 
that only hemoglobin A1c is a proven standardized marker to measure glycemic control. Hemoglobinopathies may affect the shape of red blood cells, their volume, permeability, and blood viscosity. For example, hemoglobin S polymerization causes red blood cells to become more rigid and sickle shaped. This can alter how glucose crosses the RBC membrane and its binding to hemoglobin. As a result, the glycation rate of hemoglobin variants can be affected. Hemoglobin variants also shorten the lifespan of red blood cells by making them fragile, so they break down and hemolyze faster. Hemolysis results in a shorter 60 to 70 day red blood cell lifespan. A reduced lifespan, reduced exposure to glycation, results in a lower hemoglobin A1c. In summary, in these hemoglobinopathy samples, glycation can be heavily affected because little or no hemoglobin A is available and variants are glycated instead. The hemoglobin variants can affect the RBC shape and the permeability and the lifespan of red blood cells is shortened. Therefore, A1C measurements and results are significantly impacted. In these cases, the laboratory must inform clinicians first of the suspected variants that may alter glycation and the A1C value, and second, that the glycemic control of the patient should be measured with alternative markers. As reported in the recent Diabetes Care Guidelines and Recommendations, A1C cannot be measured in individuals with sickle cell disease, HBSS, or other homozygous hemoglobin variants, e.g. HBEE, since these individuals lack HBA in individuals with conditions that interfere with the interpretation of A1C, alternative approaches to monitor glycemic status should be used, including self-monitoring of blood glucose, CGM, and or the use of glycated serum protein assays, such as fructosamine or glycated albumin tests. A1C does not provide a measure of glycemic variability or hypoglycemia. Now let's talk about the different testing methods. What do immunoassay, enzymatic and boronate affinity methods measure and report as A1C in the presence of variants when there is no hemoglobin A and no hemoglobin A1C? In cases like homozygous SS, these methods detect and measure variants and their glycated fractions instead of hemoglobin A and hemoglobin A1C. And they calculate the ratio of glycated fractions of the variant over the total variance, reporting results as if they were equivalent to hemoglobin A1C. In more complex cases like compound heterozygotes, SC, they measure the different variants and their respective glycated fractions. And the ratio here is calculated as the sum of the different glycated fractions of the variants over the total hemoglobin variants S and C, and again reporting results as if they were equivalent to hemoglobin A1C. 
So in the presence of variant, percent A1C is not calculated with the typical formula glycated hemoglobin A over total hemoglobin A. Instead, as they are blind to variants, these methods measure different hemoglobin fractions, use a different formula, glycated variance over total variance, harmonize results to report as percent HbA1c. Since homozygous and double heterozygous samples have been heavily affected by hemolysis, they have a reduced RBC lifespan. This alters the glycation process and invalidates the A1C result. So, by using these blind methods, the laboratory risks reporting underestimated hemoglobin A1C results, and patients may not receive treatment when they should. Which hemoglobin A1C testing method can you trust? Virad HPLC methods accurately measure hemoglobin A1C. As we have established in these homozygous or double heterozygous examples where hemoglobin A is absent and therefore hemoglobin A1C does not exist, Virad HPLC accurately reports no hemoglobin A1C result, because no result is better than a wrong result. Which analytes should be used to measure glycemic control in patients with hemoglobinopathies that do not express hemoglobin A? In conditions without hemoglobin A, laboratories should recommend alternative markers. Here are the guidelines from reference laboratories in the US, which suggest measuring fructosamine to measure glycemic control. Conclusion. For an accurate assessment of diabetes, a laboratory must be aware of the hemoglobin pattern of the patient. In the presence of hemoglobinopathies, a personalized assessment is required to evaluate possible interference. For genotypes without hemoglobin A, like homozygous or compound heterozygous, laboratories must not report HbA1c. Laboratories should inform the ordering clinician that HbA1c is inaccurate and that another analyte should be used to measure glycemic control. No HbA1c result is better than a wrong HbA1c result. Remember that cases of hemoglobinopathies can be found in the library of variants. That's all for today. I'll see you in the next exercise. Bye.